Next company is big, it's in health, it's GE Health. And GE Health's uh, general manager of Finland, Didier, will be talking about how GE Health is reaching out for Finnish startups. Uh, GE has uh, built a startup space to Vallila, for example, and they are really active uh, helping the startups and benefiting also from the startups, because that's the point, isn't it? So, welcome, Didier. I wanted to talk to you about three things. Number one, the, the new GE. So, uh, as you know, we are a fairly large company, existed and founded by Thomas Edison. And the second one, I would like to talk about the, the, the healthcare challenges, which are going to touch you pretty soon, or your child and grandchild. And last but not least, why Finland? And uh, stay with me, you will understand why we are in Finland and want to stay and grow in Finland. But number one, um, as you probably heard, three years ago, GE announced the creation of uh, industrial internet, you know, um, COE, Center of Excellence. We have recruited uh, globally thousands and thousands of software engineers. We, have, we are expanding globally, and basically what we are trying to do is to connect the machines, you know, to the users, develop analytics, and develop, you know, industrial internet. And this is pretty big for us when we are in the big ticket items like aircraft engines, locomotives, healthcare systems, and so on and so forth. This was not enough. You can invest a lot of money recruiting software engineers all over. It's not enough if you don't change the culture. The culture of a company which design heavy hardware products had to change. So the chairman and the CEO of the company, Jeff Emeltz, asked all the leadership teams everywhere globally to do a couple of things. Number one, work under the principles of fast works. And for those who don't know, the lean startup principles that have been invented by uh, Eric Ries and uh, Fred Keppel, we have been embracing those methodologies about you know, working with customers, iteration, minimal viable products, leaf face attentions, and trying to go faster and faster, which is not a traditional way a large company is operating. The second thing we have been uh, working pretty hard on, and for many of you it's not new, but working under the agile software development framework. And I tell you a couple of years ago, or even last year, the way we would develop product and software would be, I have my specifications, I work on it for one year or two years, and then I pray that the product is going to be good. So what we are doing is moving everybody under the agile software development framework and making sure that, you know, through product owners, scrum masters, agile coach, we are really, you know, changing the game. And last but not least, uh, the company is asking the leaders like me to uh, take a more uh, entrepreneurial approach that I'm going to uh, talk about in, uh, in a few minutes. So that's about the new GE. You don't need to trust me. I mean, it's not about claiming if we are number one, number two. It's what the customers say about us. The second thing is about the healthcare challenges. If you look at what's going on globally, you would see that whether you are in developed market or developing markets, there are access challenges. If you look at developing regions, the brick countries or whatever, you don't have enough technology, you don't have enough staff to take care of a growing population. If you look at countries like Europe and USA, you got also access issues since the population is aging, chronic diseases are growing, which means that you don't have enough you know, technology and staff to take care of this growing population, and at the same time, the governments are trying to reduce the cost. This is about access. When it comes to qualities, just so that you know, hospitals kill more patients per year through infections than car accidents, breast cancer, and AIDS. I repeat, hospital infections kill more patients than car accidents, breast cancer, and AIDS. So lots of issues, um, legal challenges in the Western world, and also because consumers are getting more and more aware. So from a quality standpoint, a need to increase patient safety, and at the same time, you know, to increase access. And last but not least is the cost equation. 
80% of the cost of the healthcare systems today are in the hospital, when the challenges for the hospitals is to take the patients out of the hospital as soon as possible, send them to home, and take care of them at home. So as you can imagine, these quality, cost, and access challenges are driving big discussions overall, globally, in the developed and the developing markets to discuss about how can we help healthcare with technologies and processes, since healthcare is one of the latest industry, you know, adopting technology. So um, this is the second piece. The last piece is um, why Finland? Look, uh, I'm French. I grew up in south of France on the beach and on the mountains. And uh, I'm not here in Finland for your forest. I'm not here for your good weather. I'm not here for your lakes. I'm not here for um, those reasons. I'm just here because as a global leader, I've got four research and development centers, one in Chicago, one in Bangalore, in India, one in Shanghai, in China, and one in Finland. And I just believe this is a great place. This is a great place because people are loyal, because we've got a lot of engineers, we've got a great education system, and we've got a lot of startup companies which were created the last couple of years, especially in healthcare, you know, to help us to do that. So what we did together with the team here, we are about an 800 uh, people operations. We decided beginning of the year to free up some space for startup companies. And as the startup companies were involved in uh, sensors, wireless, low battery, consumptions, cloud services, industrial internet, to come and to join us. So we are going to open next week uh, the Innovation Village. Um, and uh, Miko Kalpinen was here is the project manager there. We are already having 16 startup companies joining us during the summer. And the goal is really to work together with those startup companies on tackling some of those challenges. So why am I believing we should do it here in Finland and not in California or in Israel or in South Korea? Is again for the reason I've given to you. Great people, great education system, easy access, no corruption, Everything can happen within a small perimeter. And I've got a super duper good engineering team here which knows how to do bulky, expensive, robust, reliable devices. The challenge I'm giving to the startup companies is help us to make those platforms, digital health platforms, much smaller, much connected, much more ubiquitous so that eventually they can connect the patients from pre-hospital, hospital, and then to the home. And look, uh, every single government I'm discussing with around the world is interested about this digital platform. So my message to all of you is that after a decade of connecting people and a couple of successful years of carrying stuff and in the lift as well, the next decade should be about caring for people. So uh, look, we are proud to be here in Finland. We are investing. We have recruited since the beginning of the year something like 25 software engineers, agile coach, scrum masters, but there will never be enough people in our company. So what I'm looking for, and um, I've explained to Dmitri and uh, Jan beginning of the year, we are trying to create a manageable chaos. And I can tell you for a big company like GE, again, 300,000 employees and 150 billion, this is quite innovative, but this is the way that a company wants us to operate as leaders. So, that's all what I wanted to tell you. I wanted again to thank uh, Dimitri and uh, Jan for inviting us. And uh, I look forward to seeing some of you this afternoon if you are interested to come and join us and innovate in the field of healthcare. That's it. Keep us. OK, Didier, I'd like Good. to ask you a few questions. Yeah. Uh, this startup village is uh, really, really interesting, or innovation village. What kind of companies you already have in there? So uh, it's funny because together with Miko, since the beginning of the year, we have seen something between two to four companies per year. And we've got some small startup companies uh, coming with just one or two doctors or one or two engineers. And we've got startup companies between five and 10 people. And as a matter of fact, yesterday, Helsinki Sanomat came to interview some of those startups who are joining us. But the companies, we have been targeting out of the 140 healthcare startups are the ones which are bringing innovative and create ideas around sensors, body sensors, wireless communication, low battery consumption, as well as you know, um, cloud services and industrial internet. 
So those are the companies we are targeting. And we have set up a specific framework so that, of course, the innovations, inventions are being protected. But again, once, once more, we're trying to create a kind of chaos. We, I'm a firm believer that you don't innovate if you don't collaborate. And by having the same engineers who have been developing for the last 30 years, again, nice, bulky, expensive, reliable, robust systems, I cannot take it to the next step. And I want that to happen here in Finland. Okay. What about when uh, Arctic 15 to this year is uh, called Exit Path? So uh, are you looking for startups to uh, acquire in Finland? So the, the, first, uh, the first thing we are doing is creating this um, ecosystem with startups to come there. And this is an experiment. This is like fast works. You go and you try and you build. And then the, the idea is uh, GE Ventures, with a VC arm of GE, is going to visit us uh, once or two, twi two times a year to go and visit some startup companies and to see if we need to invest. So that's the idea, creating a platform for our own VC arm to visit them and to see how we, um, we can partner, put some money or acquire some of them. Okay. Or maybe uh, Mikko can tell everybody who's in more interested about this, like how, the, uh, how it goes if somebody wants to join your... So if anybody, yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's a question in the audience. Another question. Questions coming in. So my question would be that you say that it's very much of just trying. It's a, it's a new model, you're trying it. But according to your hypothesis, what would you say would be the key main benefits for a startup to join the innovation village? So uh, look, for those healthcare startups who are interested to invent and innovate, the fact of being part of a campus is going to be beneficial because they are going to discuss about healthcare and healthcare challenges every day instead of being a high-tech campus. So that's number one. They are going to discuss with people, business, engineers, marketing, who have been in this industry for 20 years. And last but not least, you know, if we are successful, we might get some funding and money from GE Ventures and the money company to help those startups. But I can tell you the world of healthcare is growing. Every single big company is in healthcare. There is a massive problem, which means that I would recommend to the healthcare startup companies to really think about what type of problems are you looking for and not just developing technology for the sake of technology and look at the outcomes and not just the activities. Hospitals today are looking at increasing access, increasing patient safety and reducing costs. So the perfect storm um, with the people I was discussing this morning 10% of the GDP is spent in healthcare. And it's gone, not going to go down, but it has to be more efficient. So that's what we can offer to those companies, is partner with them, help them. At the beginning, it might just be some space, and then collaborate furthermore if needed. More questions? There were some. Dimitri. Hi, Didier. Yeah. Um, I got a question for you. The first time we met uh, at your offices, and you showed us around. And, uh, you know, I was expecting a lot of gray and a lot of stuff, but you actually, you know, got rid of all the furniture, you painted everything green and red, actually, you let your employees paint it whatever color they wanted. And I've not seen many, like, old school corporations do that. So can you tell us a bit more about what made you do that? What made you to try to change the culture? And how are the people responding to it within the organization? Look, look two, two things. First of all, at our global leadership meeting, we got brainwashed by the chairman and startup companies who came and talked to us. That's number one. But number two, which was a shocking factor, I have two young daughters, one 15 and one 19, and my 19 years old is studying in Argentina after studying in Spain and Barcelona. So the kind of young population. And she came and visited me in January, and I took her during the weekend to our offices, and she told me, you know, Dad, I would never come and work for you. And I asked her, why that? And she said, your place is ugly. <laughs> and I said, what's wrong with the place? We have engineers in cubicles. Each of them are having their space. And we've got a nice cafeteria and food and garage. And we wash the car. What's wrong with that? And then she was doing um, an internship in a startup company here in Finland. And she took me there. And I realized, how am I going to attract 20, 30, 50 talented software engineers in Finland if I keep operating with cubicles and black and white walls and the old-fashioned way. So that was the starting point. And I tell you, the, the employees, my good engineers, who know how to develop 
bulky, expensive, reliable devices. At the beginning, they didn't want that. When we started to remove the walls, they didn't want. Now they all want to do it. They painted, they became crazy, they took pictures, you have wallpapers on the walls. They even created internal cottages in the, co in the company. And all of a sudden, it created a new spirit. So hopefully, it's creating a dynamism and innovative culture. It's going also to attract more startup companies. But what we have done, and uh, I'm super proud of the work that Miko has been doing, is we took uh, the designers from the uh, Halto uh, Design Factory. They came in our office. They met the startup. And actually, the place for the startup is designed by the startups. Is designed by the startups. And that's, I think, what is going to be innovative, I tell you. Trying to move a company which is more than 100 years old and so big has not been easy. But our chairman and the CEO of G Healthcare are really pushing us to the next level. So um, again, when you come back, Mitri, you will be amazed about uh, the place changing. And this is the new GE. This is about fast work. This is being about agile. And uh, I en engage you and invite you to come and see us. Many corporations are, are struggling with the change, struggling to become startup friendly. Uh, and it's, it's, you said about the engineers were afraid of the change and that now they love it. But what about uh, people under you, the middle management? Because it's been a big change for them also, hasn't it? It has been a big change. And uh, between you and me at the beginning, I did one mistake. I was driving everything myself at the speed of light. And then I realized that I needed my middle management you know, to help me. So I've got a very good team, and Miko is one of them. And can you believe this guy is a finance guy? He's the CFO. And he became super creative. He's spending, I think, more time now on the startup companies and the village than on our financial issues. But I've got uh, manufacturing, uh, Miko, and marketing, and a couple of engineers, not necessarily super young, engaged. And also, they saw the results. We recruited people, 25 people like this, when, when I was here 11 years ago, because I forgot to tell you, I used to live here also 11 years ago, we had difficulties to recruit talent. They were all going for the big end company. Now you've got a lot of talents, but people can choose and pick, pick and choose. So having the middle management team convinced is easy, but when it comes from the very top, the chairman of General Electric, it's also helpful. When the CEO of GE Healthcare is pushing us to move in through this direction, this is also helpful. Okay? That's very promising, I tell you. There's another question. Mr. Mike? Yep. I think I know this gentleman. Right. Uh, I am Pekka Koponen from Spinverse. I'm going to speak a bit later about our experience on bridging the large companies and startups. I have a question to you about the competitiveness of Finnish innovation system. And uh, it's about, um, so you mentioned that you have been selecting your home, not because of uh, typical Finnish strengths like the weather and, and uh, spouses, but the, uh, so it was between India, China, uh, UK, Finland, and uh, you now kind of each of those countries are screaming to get taxpayers like GE to hire people like you are hiring and attracting companies around like you are doing. So how well are Finnish, how well is Finnish government serving you, and are you getting all the support for your work here? Look, I cannot disclose what I'm getting from the government. I was with them this morning. That's why but, I'm asking. But uh, if you look at the Q1, the GDP was down. Unemployment rate was close to 10%. I think everybody in this country is eager to create jobs, to create value. My message to everybody coming back in the country 11 years after that I believe the country became too slow. The big corporation became too slow, the government became too slow, and you got again California, Israel, South Korea, Sweden, a lot of governments which are trying to go fast. So the good news is that we've got a lot of people like you, young startup companies or Matthew startups, who are pushing. So my pledge to you is keep pushing. Keep pushing, 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 and together with companies like us, eventually we can make the government being more agile, and being more entrepreneur and really create this digital health platform that I think Finland could really develop. So, huge hand to DDR. Merci.